Welcome to Getting Good at Godot, the most amateur Godot tutorial on the internet. In this tutorial, things are about to get more interesting. We're going to use GDScript to add some functionality to the nodes that we added in part 2. Also, I'm going to assume that you have some knowledge of how a programming language works, but I'm still going to explain how to use GDScript. First of all, here's a helpful tip. Uh, you can actually rename your nodes by double-clicking on them in the Scene tab. Uh, so let's name the sprite node Player. Having informative uh, node names does help a lot in the long term uh, when you have a bunch of nodes all nested. It does get confusing. So next we can add a script to our player node. Um, so we can select it in the inspector down to the script property here, uh, which is inherited from node. You can see, let's select this, let's press new script, and we get this little dialog box pop up. Um, so you might notice we can't actually change this even if we wanted to and we shouldn't change this because it does inherit sprite and right now GDScript is the only language supported. We will need to change this path. I'm going to save this as player.gd. Um, if I put it as a built-in script it would remove this and what built-in scripts do are they are built into the XML of the node. Uh, if I open up in my file browser, which you can't see, it's off screen. Um, oh, let's just pick random scene. Um, bear with me. TSCN files look like this. There you go. Um, so, in if in a built-in, uh, in a built-in script, you would have this is what the entire script looks like. Um, so in in the actual editor, this would have proper line breaks and whatnot. You can see it's all just built in. And I don't want to do this for a player because players are usually quite involved uh, to program, usually very big scripts. Um, and it can be quite confusing and difficult to access them. So it's just good pra practice to keep them uh, at a physical location uh, in your project folder. Let's press create. So you can see we are immediately put into the script uh, scene view here. And it's got some stuff already in it. So you can read this. For now I'm going to remove this because I don't really need it for the sake of this tutorial. And I'm also going to leave, uh, remove this. So you can see extend sprite. This means that we get all the goodies, all the commands that go along with uh, being a sprite. Um, additionally, we'll get things to do with like being part of Node 2D, uh, canvas item and Node. But for now, let's just worry about this. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a ready function already here, and the ready function is called uh, one time as soon as the uh, player is initialized into the into the world, or as soon as the node is initialized into the world. So under ready, let's put print. Hello world. So when we run this program, it should initialize all these nodes and call their ready functions, and it should print hello world to the output terminal here. So if we, there we go, you can see it did it. And close it. So that's great. Um, so our first task is going to be to make the player sprite move constantly to the right. Um, because I think that would be a valuable exercise. Uh, so, we need a function that can be called basically as quickly as possible, so we can keep updating its position. Uh, fortunately for us, Godot does have uh, a function that would that would fit that. It's called uh, process. And what process does, it basically calls itself as quickly as possible, and it passes the argument delta which is the number of seconds since the last call of this function. So if I just do print delta here, uh, every, well as quickly as it can, it will print us the time since the last function call. However, that's not all. We need to set it so that Godot knows to start calling the process function. So there's one command in the ready uh, function we can do, which is set process true. And that's it. Oops, hit my microphone, it's very unprofessional. Um, 
So yeah, so set close as true. And once we do this, it'll start to call this repeatedly. So let's just press play and we can see what happens. So you can see in the output, it's scrolling past a bunch of numbers. And it is quite a few numbers. Uh, they're all found about the same. It calls it about, you know, 100, it says 60 times a second, I think it looks, it looks like. Um, so this is really useful for not having to rely on frames. Uh, so if your uh, user is lagging, if they have a low frame rate, you can do, you know, like a move speed times delta or something like that. That's generally what it, it is useful. We're not going to worry about it for now because we're just going to assume that everyone's computer can run this um, fairly simple program. It's not crisis. Okay. So, so next, we're going to try a function that's built into script, or, or built into sprite. Uh, the sprite node has a function called set pause, and this sets the position. I close this so it doesn't freak out. We're gonna, it sets the position of the no, of the of the node uh, to a known location, and we do this by typing vector two, uh, and then the coordinates here. So let's do five hundred comma five hundred. You can see here if this is correct, uh, it'll start processing, and every, as fast as it can, it'll start setting the node's position to um, x500 and y500. Let's try this. It did it. Wonderful. So you can see here, um, every, as fast as it can, it's being set to the little same location, so we can't really see any visible difference. But if we compare it to our view in the editor here, you can see it has moved from its original position to here. So it is working. Um, and we could probably substitute in some fun numbers like 500 times delta. That would make it vibrate probably. Yeah, it's just a little bit vibrating because delta is changing constantly. Um, so we need some way to get the last location. So I'll, I'll write this down. Let's uh, um, get the last location of sprite. Uh, let's actually just call it player to be consistent. Um, add one to the x coordinate of player, and then set the position. Um, set the new position of the, of the player, and then that's basically what we got to do. So first of all, let's initialize. A new variable and let's call it current position. And fortunately, Sprite has another function called get pause. And what this does, as it sounds, it gets the current position of the Sprite object and returns it in a vector2 format, much like you have here. So we can do var current position is equal to get pause and there you go. So now we're storing the current position uh, in this variable. Um, and for now, let's just print current position so we, so we can see what's actually going on here. Okay, so it's printing the current position, which is 500, 500. We can access the x coordinate of current position by doing dot x. Um, Obviously, if you want the y corner, be dot y, and yeah, it's that. So if we just type the x, we get 500. So we could set it so that current position dot x is equal to current position dot x plus one, or uh, if you're a little more advanced, you do plus equals one. Just increment current position x by one, and now. We can set the new position by remo removing this hard-coded vector2 and replacing it with the vector2 that we're just modifying. So we're setting position, current position. Let's try this. There we go. It does work. So you can see this does scroll the uh, player very slowly across the screen. It's quite riveting. Well, there, is one, there is one problem uh, with moving the player like this, and that is because this doesn't really gel with Godot's built-in collision detection. Um, 
So if I had any kind of like wall here, it wouldn't really notice because it's effectively doing a snap teleport every, you know, 60 times a second. It's, you know, it doesn't check for walls. Uh, that's, that's something we'll deal with a little bit further down the line when we get into physics bodies and collision properly. Uh, but for now, that's basics on how to, how to move, how to make a script move. Um, you can access the documenta documentation for more commands and things to do uh, with Sprite. Uh, if I just search it up, because I apparently wasn't prepared enough for this. Um, do, uh, documentation, Sprite. And hope that the first result is what I'm looking for. Then, oh dear, where is it? So, what I'm looking for is the documentation page for Sprite. There we go, I got it. Okay. Um, there it is. As you can see. This is Godot Docs. It's got Sprite. This is the Sprite object we were just modifying. And it's got all these functions which you can use. So if we wanted to do something like um, set flip v, then a boolean whether or not it's flipped, we can just go back here, we can type... Let's do it in our ready function. Set flip v true. And then if we do it again, it's upside down. Um, and this, we can do the same for um, anything contained in Node2D. Uh, so you can see there's the get pause function here in Node2D. So all things that inherit from Node2D will have this function. They will also have set pause and all this other slightly complicated looking stuff here. And same for canvas item, same for Node. I'm sure you understand inheritance by now. Um, I hope you do. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. I would recommend, um, you know, taking a little look at this. Uh, you know, at yourself, try messing around with it, moving it in different directions, trying to, you know, mess around with maybe the functions, I don't know, do whatever you want. Most people learn better by, you know, doing it themselves. You gotta take initiative. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for part four, I'll be covering input a bit more clearly.